Hi traders, it's Nicholas Puri here. The focus of this channel is obviously about learning to trade. However, so many new traders only want to focus on the charts themselves and completely neglect fundamental analysis. This is particularly true for private forex and commodity traders who often have a broad view of one or two fundamental topics and base everything else on the charts. Of course, you can trade profitably doing this, but it's sort of like driving a car without checking your mirrors. Most of the time you'll be safe, but every now and then you'll have an accident. So in order to avoid that, we're going to be including more fundamental analysis style videos on this channel. Now some of these videos will be entertaining, like some of the eye in the sky videos that we've done, while others will be purely factual. Now this video in particular is going to be a factual one, and in fact it's going to be a bit more like a formal lesson. So I recommend you sit back and relax, maybe take some notes or even put it on in the background while you're doing something else, like maybe your analysis, driving the car or doing the washing up, whatever you want. You don't necessarily need to be watching the video, but you just have to be listening. Now, this video is going to be the first in a series that discusses the massive global impact Saudi Arabia has and how their current situation can affect global markets, particularly having a direct effect on oil and the US dollar. This video is based on an article we wrote recently which was featured as an editor's pick on SeekingAlpha.com. The link to that is in the description box. Now the relationship between the US and Saudi Arabia continues to gather headlines in the global financial and political press. While this is expected to continue in the near future considering President-elect Trump's stubborn stance on the issue, it is currently unclear how these issues will conclude. In order to fully appreciate the background of these issues and the relationship between the US and Saudi Arabia, it's important first of all to understand the system that underpins this connection, the so-called petrodollar. In this video, we'll explore the history of the relationship between these two nations and the formation of the petrodollar system, with the ultimate aim of comprehending the implications on the world economy and the potential decline of the US dollar. This video is part of a series that will provide the viewer with an overall understanding of this situation, concluding with a breakdown of the current issues and potential solutions for this ongoing matter. The fascinating origins begin with the Yom Kippur War, commencing on the 6th of October 1973, when Arab countries, including Egypt and Syria, launched an attack on Israel on Yom Kippur Day, causing Israel to go on full nuclear alert. In an attempt to defuse the conflict, the US acted as an intermediary between the parties, with Secretary of State Henry Kissinger facilitating the so-called shuttle diplomacy, beginning on the 5th November 1973. Nevertheless, they opted to supply Israel with war material and other supplies. In retaliation, OPEC countries triggered an oil price increase from 3 US dollars per barrel to as high as 17 US dollars per barrel. In addition to this, they also chose to reduce oil production by 25%. The consequences of this action were severe for the US. They entered the worst recession since World War II, experiencing rising inflation, decreasing industrial production and a plunge in the stock market, which continued for a number of years until finally coming to an end in the early 1980s. Following the famous Nixon shock economic measures, the US chose to cancel the convertibility of the US dollar to gold in 1971. As a result, the US dollar experienced a significant reduction in purchasing power during the period 1971 to 1973. Interestingly, prior to this decision, economist and Nobel Prize winner Milton Friedman warned President Nixon that the gold price could fall to as low as 6 US dollars per ounce if the US went ahead. In fact, the gold price rose madly from 35 US dollars per ounce in 1967, the fixed convertibility price, to as high as 135 US dollars per ounce in 1973. The weakening power of the dollar severely affected the accounts of the OPEC countries and provided them with further motivation to increase the oil price. The oil producing countries of the Arab world decided to use their oil as a political weapon they will reduce oil production by 5% a month. In addition to this, a further issue became how to motivate these countries to actually hold US dollars, considering it had now become a fiat currency and was in a state of losing value. 
With the situation worsening, the US began to devise a range of policies to address the situation, including a military solution. Unofficial accounts towards the end of 1973 reveal a scenario under which the US were preparing for a military invasion of Saudi Arabia to secure the oil fields and avoid disruption of supply to the West. At this point, there were multiple issues to be addressed, including neutralizing oil as an economic weapon, influencing OPEC's decisions, where the Saudi are the most relevant party, so that they do not undermine and disarticulate the world monetary system, and avoiding the Soviet Union from taking advantage of the strained relationship and expanding its political, ideological and military influence over the Saudi Kingdom. In March 1974, the situation began to improve. OPEC lifted the oil embargo and the US took this opportunity to redesign an oil policy, one which could achieve the goal of normalizing the political relationship and avoiding further oil strains. This diplomatic option began to gain traction and in July 1974, Kissinger sent the newly appointed Treasury Secretary William Simon, named the Energy Tsar and a former Wall Street investment banker, and his deputy Jerry Parsky on a secret mission to Saudi Arabia to broker a deal. The deal would involve persuading the Saudis to finance the increasing US deficit with oil profits, and unofficial sources reported that the mission was desperate and the US President was not willing to consider failure as an option. The deal that Simon offered was simple. The Saudis would agree to price oil in dollars and to reinvest these dollars into US Treasury securities and Euro dollar deposits in US banks. In exchange, the US would commit to take steps to stabilize the exchange value of the US dollar and agree to sell advanced weapons to the Saudi Kingdom. Weapons that, according to some accounts, were the result of the massive overproduction triggered by the Vietnam War and that the US were eager to place. There was also a little known additional piece. US banks would use the petrodollars as loans to emerging markets in Latin America, South Asia and Africa. In turn, these countries would purchase US, European and Japanese exports. The ultimate goal was to reignite global growth and increase demand for oil, a win-win solution for all parties involved. With these deals being made, the Saudis strongly demanded a non-disclosure clause. The US would have to agree to maintain confidentiality regarding the Saudi investments. This was agreed and maintained for over 40 years, until May 2016 when the US Treasury finally revealed the size of Saudi holdings in US Treasuries. However, the official figure for these holdings could potentially be misleading, since it also ignores the US Treasury securities owned by Saudi Arabia but held by offshore intermediaries in the Cayman Islands and other offshore banking centers. While the deal appeared to have been made, there were several problems in the implementation. The Saudis are notorious for delaying in decision making, and in this case, they chose to vacillate and not commit immediately. They wanted time to consider alternative mechanisms for oil pricing, such as gold for example. Additionally, the resignation of Kissinger in 1974 as a result of the Watergate scandal provided them with yet another excuse for delays. To overcome the gridlock, the US sought to apply pressure by openly discussing the military option of occupying Saudi Arabia. On the 1st of January 1975, Commentary magazine published one of the most famous articles in the history of American foreign policy. The article was written by Robert W. Tucker, head of the American Foreign Policy Institute and a member of the inner circle of the White House. The title was Oil, the Issue of American Intervention, and it made explicit references to the military scenario the US was working on. The article served its purpose and convinced the Saudis to sign the deal. Despite a range of highs and lows, all administrations since President Carter have shown commitment to the mantra of a strong dollar. For 35 years, from 1975 to 2010, the petrodollar deal has remained intact, despite oil price increases and dollar volatility. The dollar has solidified its role as the leading reserve currency and the leading payments currency. But, by 2009, a new economic crisis eroded the stability of the petrodollar deal. In September of the same year, 
world leaders gathered for the G20 Leaders Summit and President Obama proposed a plan to boost world growth based on a simple idea that each major economic bloc or region would commit to move away from a sector it's been overly relying on and towards an area that offered growth potential. For China and Japan, this would mean moving from capital investment to consumption, Europe would move from exports to investment, and the US itself would take on the task of increasing exports. The main obstacle in attaining a growth in export was that without being able to double the size of the labour force or the productivity of labour, which are the main drivers of industrial production growth, the only viable option would be to cheapen the currency. By July 2011, just 18 months after the meeting, the dollar index stood at 80.48, which represents the decline of 8% and a new all-time low. A currency war had started, which continues to survive until today. Relations between Saudi Arabia and the US have deteriorated sharply over the course of the Obama administration. There are a number of causes for this. One being the Iran-US nuclear negotiations and the US acknowledgement of Iran as the leading regional power. Second, the release of a top secret 28 page section of the 9-11 commission report that clearly reveals links between the members of the Saudi royal family and the 9-11 hijackers. The Saudis have threatened to sell their US treasury securities in response, but they failed so far to keep their word on that. And thirdly, the US is now a net exporter of energy and supposedly has the largest oil reserves in the world. In response to the weakening of the US dollar, several OPEC nations are now allowing oil transactions to be carried out in other currencies. In January 2016, India and Iran agreed to settle their oil sales in India rupees. In 2014, Qatar agreed with China to be the first hub for clearing transactions in the Chinese Yuan. In December 2015, the United Arab Emirates and China created a new currency swap agreement for the Yuan. And all of these strongly indicate that the Gulf states are taking measures to reduce their dependence and exposure to the US dollar. All of the conditions that gave rise to the petrodollar agreement now stand in the exact opposite position of where they were in 1975. Neither the US nor Saudi Arabia have much leverage over the other. A new oil pricing mechanism is possible, and once identified and announced, it will signify the end of the US dollar as the leading currency. The oil price will pave the way and will certainly soon be followed by other goods and commodities. Will this be the start of a new era? So guys, thank you so much for watching. I'd love to continue this discussion in the comment section. So if you have any questions, comments, opinions on this, any viewpoints, please leave a comment below and we can continue the discussion there. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. I know it's been a bit different to what we normally have here. And of course, if you want more videos about learning to trade and also now about the fundamental side of the markets, then make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on the videos that we release on a weekly basis. And of course, just finally, if you do want to learn more about our unique and exclusive method of trading the financial markets, make sure you sign up for our Inner Circle mailing list. It's free, the link's in the description box. And when you sign up, you can get access to our four part video mini series about learning our method of trading. Thanks a lot for watching. Stay tuned for the second part of this video coming very soon. Take care, see you soon.